Welcome to issues related to Japan. The topic this time is politics lacks a sense of crisis in the situation in neighboring countries. On October 20th, Tsutomu Saito, editorial advisor to the Sankey Shimbun, gave a lecture titled The World and the 30 Years Since the Collapse of the Soviet Union. Focusing on relations with Russia, Mr. Saito touched on China's growing stance toward foreign countries and the situation on the Korean Peninsula, which is shaken by the issues of missile and nuclear development, and warned that Japan is facing the biggest crisis of the post-war era. The main contents of his speech are as follows. I was stationed in Moscow for a total of eight and a half years, five and a half years before and after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and three years immediately after the establishment of the Putin regime in Russia. What I felt most was that the spell of Stalin's leadership had not been broken. The Putin regime is a direct descendant of Stalin's dictatorship. President Putin has experienced the collapse of the communist regime twice, once with the fall of the Berlin Wall in East Germany, where he was posted, and again with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Mr. Putin said in 2005, the dissolution of the Soviet Union is the greatest geopolitical catastrophe of the 20th century, and he is frustrated by the experience. So, he invaded the territories of Russia's neighboring countries that had formed the Soviet Union. The invasion of South Ossetia and the annexation of the Crimean Peninsula were aimed at recovering lost ground. China, led by President Xi Jinping, General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, is imitating this behavior of Russia. Under the slogan of the Chinese dream advocated by Xi, China has regained the territories that the Qing dynasty lost to the Western powers in an insect-eaten fashion, seized the South China Sea, and is finally reaching out to Taiwan. The issue of Taiwan is directly related to the Senkaku Islands, Ishigaki City, Okinawa Prefecture. For Japan, too, it is a matter of immediate concern. Both China and Russia are engaged in the same kind of ethnic oppression. Although they do not accept criticism from the international community as internal affairs, human rights violations are occurring incessantly. What the regimes of both countries are causing can even be described as a man-made disaster of the worst kind. Japan is surrounded by these countries. If the Korean Peninsula is included, the situation is critical. North Korea has repeatedly conducted missile launch drills from railroad cars and tests of submarine-launched ballistic missiles, SLBMs, perhaps targeting the vacuum created by the change of Prime Minister Yoshihida Suga to Fumio Kishida and the subsequent lower house election. The Financial Times also reported that China had conducted a test launch of a hypersonic weapon capable of carrying a nuclear warhead. The Chinese authorities denied it by saying that it was a normal spacecraft test. Incidentally, Russia has already announced that it has developed the same type of weapon. In this international environment, I feel that Japanese politicians lack a sense of crisis. There are political parties that barely speak out on security issues, and even those that have pledged to abolish the security law in this general election. If national security is not guaranteed, no welfare can be guaranteed. Politics must first of all protect national interests and national sovereignty. Thirty years after the collapse of the Soviet communist regime, Japan is allied with the United States, the country that defeated the Soviet Union, and is now in a situation where, if things go wrong, a government involving the Communist Party may be born. I am very concerned that the same mistakes that were made by the Soviet Communist Party, and are still being made by the Chinese Communist Party will be repeated, in Japan.